she was my preacher. Every time she'd come home, she'd preach to me. And I'd ask. So I wanted to hear. I was thirsty. I, was, I wanted to find peace, and I couldn't find it in the bottle. Only thing I could find in the bottle is just hang over and get mad and go out with the other parties. And I, I was not happy. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Today we'll hear from Native Alaskans Andrew and Nida Nelson as together they tell the amazing story of how God saved Andrew and delivered him from alcohol. This is a storyteller classic, one you don't want to miss. My name is Andrew Nelson, I'm from Miggie. I used to fish there on Donegie for the sailboat days. I was a tough job because I, I was a young guy, but I was a hard worker. I never give up. There's one thing I never do is give up. It's like in my Christian life. I'll never go back to live the worldly life in my, as long as I live. I'll always put the Lord first. One thing I remember when I was a kid, when I did something, I did it right or I don't do it at all. And like when in, in Iggy, we had a chief. My dad was a chief. And anything he say goes. And what he said went. And Elliot Way, we used to go out hunting together, go out there and get ducks, geese in the fall for the winter. Then we put up our dogfish, carry our dogfish. I never had much uh, freedom. My dad worked me. He worked me hard. He let me carry my fish all the way up from down at Cannery, all the way up with two-wheeler, load the fish, take it home, and then chop wood for the dogs, cook for the dogs, feed the dogs, uh, to put grass in the dogs' houses, saw wood. You know, a little guy me, I, I saw wood, and I chopped the blocks. He had me work, and my sisters go out on, have a movie and stuff like that. I, got, I couldn't do that. He said, you got to do these things first. Then I never get to go nowhere. My, my dad was a strong Elliot. He always liked to work. I think he died of cancer myself. They say he died of TB, but I don't, I don't believe it. Because he never spit, spit blood in his life. Only thing he spit and hum, moan, groan all night long. He became skin and bones. His back he had bones sticking out in his back, rear end, from laying down in the bed so long. He was just nothing but bones. And every time he hurt so much, he used, he used to tell me, go down to the doctor and tell him I want some pain shots. Then he'd come up and give him a pain shot for $5, and he would sleep that night. Otherwise, he'd moan and groan all night. When I was a little kid, they used to give us wine at the church at Orthodox. I, my background is Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. And I used to be a boy to take care of the instant pot, and I used to see the preacher there fixing the wine up to have served to the people in the morning, have communion. And I'd see him drink out of that thing, I would take a zip out of that wine. Then when I get out there, I have to make confession first before I could drink that wine. That then they would give me a one teaspoon of wine. Mmm, good boy. And then when my mom started drinking, and after my dad passed away, and then I started drinking wine. And then from there on, I, I, I couldn't stop. It just, just keeps on going down. After I started drinking beer, and then it just kept on. It just got worse. But when I got in service, it got worse. Then when I lost my mom, when I was in San Diego, she passed away. So I, I couldn't handle it. I just drank after drank after. So they say, Andrew, we're going to let you go because you, 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 you're not... Um, uh, this is bothering you what you when you lost your mother. So they let me out in hardship hardship discharge and two months early. So I got home. Then I went back back to drinking again. It just it was just a matter of just time, you know. Never no peace. At times me and my wife would sit and ask herself, gee, what are we gonna do? So we went and see a a Catholic priest, and he give us a note, and he'd write it down and say, read this every night, and it'll help you guys. We did that, and nothing happened. And finally, a missionary came to Iggy, Harlan Willis, and he 
preach the gospel. And at the time that my wife would go to church and come home and tell me all about the service they had up there. It seemed like I was going to church too. That would make me drink more because I know it would make me feel guilty and I didn't like the life I was living. My wife came home and she said she's born again. And I said, about time. And that's what I, I wanted to hear all the time. She was my preacher. Every time she came home, she preached to me. And I'd ask. So I wanted to hear. I was thirsty. I, was, I wanted to find peace. And I couldn't find it in a bottle. Only thing I could find in a bottle is just hang over and get mad and go out with the other parties. And I, I was not happy. Uh, well, I was searching, see, what I was searching for Jesus. And I, I would just keep drinking and drinking and drinking and searching. And then when I heard about her, her getting saved, my wife getting saved, and accepting Christ as Savior, and I could see the change in her life. And I wanted that. And I didn't want to go my, my way all the time. So, and, But it kept on going. For nine months I drank. I remember one evening I came back home I was a little bit hungry, so I told my wife to make me a sandwich. But in my mind, I was thinking of going up to the church. But I just couldn't make myself around, around telling her that I was going to go up there. But I told her to make me a sandwich. I was out putting my shoes on. And, and after all, I mentioned to my wife, I said, I think I should go see Harlan. I think it was in February. This was nine months after I accepted the Lord. It was late in the night, 9.30, 10 o'clock. He says, can you make me a sandwich? And I said, sure, I can. So I started making him sandwich, and I thought, oh, he's going to go out, see the boys again, and be out late. He was putting on his boots, lacing them up. He said, I think I'm going to go see Harlan. And I said, okay, your sandwich is ready. You know, I just quickly said, hey, it's ready, go. You know, eat it and go. But I just gave it to him, and he ate it. As he was eating his sandwich, he says, uh, one thing I could never do is memorize verses like you. And I said, well, that's okay, but, you know, it can come easy sometimes. And he says, no, I could never memorize verses. And then, okay, and he was out the door. And we watched him. I, I just want to go up there. I just, I, I'm just getting t just tired of this life of mine, the way I'm, I'm going, make no headways. I'm getting, it's getting where I'm getting, I, I want to find peace or quiet or something. It, it bothers me inside. So I went up there. The kids got up and says, where'd dad go? Did he say he was going up to the church? And I said, yeah, we watched. We saw him pass the window, go into the church and no lights came on in the church. And the kids, he must be in the dark. When I got to the church, the lights were out. I walked in anyway, and as I walked in, and I kneeled down in front of the, the pulpit thing there and, and asked God to help me. He says, I'm getting tired of the way I'm just running my life. I want a new life. I, I want you to help me. And the district, when I said that, the lights came on, and the pastor came up and said, Andrew, Need help? I said, I sure do. I said, I'm getting tired of the way I'm living. The life I'm doing now, I never make it. That's all I keep doing, wanting to drink and drink. I, I want to quit. I need help. He says, Andrew, you know what? In Romans 10 30, he said, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he said, Can you quote that? I said, Yeah. Say, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what I want to do. I said, I'm getting tired of running this life of mine. Because I, I can't make no headways. I tried everything. And then he asked me, he said, do you want to accept Christ as Savior? Yeah. I said, sure. I, I, I want to accept him tonight. I don't want to wait no longer because it's just getting worse. Maybe God could help me get out of this mess. I can't do it by myself, in no way. So he led me to the Lord. I asked God to forgive me of my sin, cleanse me from all my unrighteousness, and ask for forgiveness so that I have a 
clean heart and could walk with the Lord the rest of my life. And we prayed there together and said, Amen. And I said, now nah, i got to go home and tell my wife. I waited and waited and waited. Finally, there was, the lights went out. And, you know, I wondered, is he going to come home? What is he going to do? Is this going to be a really a bad night or what? And then there was a knock at the door. I opened it. My wife came through the door and I said, guess what? Romans 10, 13, say, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, it was wonderful. I could see my wife's face change. And I said, that's a whole verse. I said, that's Romans 10, 13. He said, I know. And, and I hugged him. And he said, yep, I accepted the Lord. I was so excited. You, you want to eat anything? You want something to drink or what? He says, I got to go to bed. I was tired, just exhausted. It's like a big load come off my back. And the next day I started reading the Bible. And tears rolling down my eyes. The Bible just opened up. just like a gush of water come out of there. I understand the Bible so clear, but from then on, I never quit reading the Bible. I just kept on reading all the time because I, I understand it. It was open to me that I could understand the words. Before, it was just blank words. It was yes, no, forgive your sins, and ask Christ to come in your heart. It didn't mean nothing to me, but when I accept my, my Savior, it makes a lot of difference. Before, I used to be a drunk, a fighter, and a wound beater, and I, I, I was no good. I, I didn't know which way to turn. And after I accept Christ as Savior, everything just completely changed. I never touched a drop of liquor for 12 straight years from that night. And I, I always think it every now and then, how God so strong could stop me drinking just one night. What a testimony. If you've ever wondered if there's hope for you, let me tell you, there is. God is strong, and there's nothing He can't deliver you from, including sin, shame, and judgment. That's why Jesus died on the cross and was raised up from the dead, so that we could be set free from sin's penalty and power and be with God forever. Have you put your trust in Jesus Christ, or are you trying to make it on your own? My friend, there's only one way to be set free, and that's God's way. He tells us in the Bible, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Want to know more? Visit our website, withoutreservation.com, and click on the tab, New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. We're also on Facebook at Without Reservation. Missed a program or want to listen again? You can download our app and take the storyteller with you. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.